Hey, what's up, guys? It's time for another Days of Our Lives review. And I just had to think of what so I was about to do a review of. So I, um, I, I um, recorded them out of order today. Um, <laughs> I usually do Days of Our Lives first, and here I am doing Days of Our Lives last. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm just going to go in order of, talk about an order of that I um, put my notes. Um, I'm assuming that I had them in a certain order, but, you know, how I can be sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> but these are the last is the only soap that I took notes on everything that happened um this week because I got bored with the other ones. <laughs> well, I watched days Monday and Wednesdays on Wednesday, and then Thursday and Fridays last night Friday, and then Golden GH I watched GH all last all the episodes last night, and then Bold Monday and Tuesday last night, and then Wednesday Thursday this morning. Uh, Monday through Friday this morning, so they're still fresh in my head, so I was like, I'll do those first, since I didn't take that many notes, and they're still fresh in my head, so here I am doing days last, so. <laughs> Anyways, um, Brady. Start by talking about Brady, Kristen, and Rachel drama. I swear, Brady, how in the world is he John Black's son? John Black's son and Victor Kyriakis' grandson. He is a freaking dumbass. Oh, my God. He's going to roll up on... What we saw at the end of last Friday's episode is he um tore up the new custody agreement that Bell suggested that they go with, rips it up, and then he pulls a gun on Kristen. <laughs> And, and he's telling her he should kill her right now and stuff, you know, because, you know, he's thinking that she has Rachel hidden somewhere, and I'm thinking, if you think she has Kristen stash somewhere, don't you think that she's probably around the house, and she's probably gonna see you threatening her mother, and sure enough, in comes Rachel yelling, um, Um, oh yeah, oh, that happened first. I was like, he's telling Chris, I remember he's telling, so Kristen to shut up. <laughs> um, oh no, that was after, okay. Rachel rushes in and Brady panics, tries to hide the gun and Kristen tells Rachel to come to her and Brady tells her to shut up and Rachel yells at him, don't talk to her like that. And, um, Lordy, he takes, um, Rachel out kicking and screaming Go oh, lordy. <laughs> I was just ready for her to knee him in the gut or something. But no. They get back to John and Marlena's and Brady. You know, of course, Rachel's mad. And then he tells her to go to our room. Jada shows up. And, um, you know, Brady puts the gun back. It was um John's gun. It was in some, like, locked box. And he had that coat or whatever. And I'm like, oh, lordy. And John's out of town, so he doesn't know how stupid his son is being right now. But <laughs> yeah, Jada Watson thinks that um <laughs> she's ready to go arrest Kristen, and but now she's like, I'm not here to arrest you. What? <laughs> I was like, you did, did you not just pull a gun on Kristen? And he's thinking that Kristen had called the cops on him, but no, Rachel comes out and says that she did it when they stopped for gas. <laughs> I was like, oh shit. <laughs> yes, right, Rachel. You go, girl. Girl power. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, but, um, uh, Belle ended up going, I guess, over to Damaris, I guess, to get the custody agreement. And Chris was trying to tell her what happened. And Belle didn't believe that Brady would be that stupid. But I'm like, Belle, do you not know your brother? Both of your brothers are dumbasses. Seriously, Eric, too. <laughs> but I'll talk about more about him later. But um, she doesn't believe it, but, you know, she ends up finding out about Brady and going down to the police station. <laughs> well, where Brady is confessing to Jada everything that happened. <laughs> like, he suspected that Kristen was, you know, had Rachel, so he went down there with a gun. And I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> Stupid. 
about <laughs> Boston. Um, and she's like, you know, um, she tried to stop him, but then they ended up talking it all through anyways and wanted to, to let go. And Trash was like, oh, no. <laughs> I'm like, Chas, I think this is probably the best case you can have <laughs> that you probably can settle. Um, but I don't know. She might have had better luck if Justin was the um attorney, but I don't know. We'll say that. <laughs> but Bertie gets released on bail and he goes back to the house and um well John Marlena is considered a penthouse, but Anyways, um, Brady is so sure that, you know, everything's going to be cool. And Belle's like, um, no, you <laughs> is not good right now. And he's like, um, so I could get some jail time. She's like, uh, yeah, dumbass. <laughs> and Rachel's listening in. I was waiting for her to smile. But, um, no, it just seems like. She was, like, kind of confused. Like, she doesn't know if she wants to be happy or sad or whatever. But, um, then it makes my head swirl. I was like, um, so how is this going to work out? I don't see Brady actually going to prison. I can see this as a way of Kristen, um, getting the upper hand. <laughs> like she won't send Brady to prison and testify or anything against him. It's like, oh, if, yeah, you give me custody of Rachel or, you know. I, well, Chris was willing to do jump, joint custody and I can see her probably going for full custody now. Which will make her look really good because, you know, hey, Brady was threatening her in front of their daughter, so... <sighs> It's just an even bigger mess and Brady's stupid. He wants to get Kristen out of Rachel's life, but he just handed, um, you know, Kristen the best way of getting Rachel um, on her own. Yeah, and, you know, like Kristen told Belle, you know, Rachel showed up on her own. She didn't go out and find Rachel. <laughs> you know, Rachel came to her and she just happened to just not tell everybody that she was there and just use it as her way of getting Rachel, which is good. I mean, you can say what you want to say about Kristen, but I mean, she's still good to Rachel. She's still a good mom to Rachel. You know, she has her faults, but, you know, Brady is a dumbass. And people think that he should raise her, even though he doesn't. Re he never really seemed to care about Tate, you know. That's he, they only mentioned him every once in a while, and he let Teresa take him out of the um, state. So, um, but <clears throat> I still say eventually, <laughs> Kristen and Brady are gonna find themselves back together. I, I used to see them now having really, really hot hate sex. And we're on Peacock, so we can get a little more graphic with this. I'm ready for some good stuff now. Come on. You guys aren't on cable, daytime cable television. Do something. Okay. Okay. So that's all I say about that. But more on Kristen in a second. Um, build it up to that first. But, um, okay. Yeah, but, um, why did I put that first? But anyways, yeah, speaking of people putting guns on people, I'm boarding. Randomly, Gabby just goes over to Lee's house and pulls a gun on him. <laughs> um, He says she doesn't have it in her, but then she <laughs> she brings up Nick. <laughs> I, was like, I was waiting for her to bring up Nick, and I'm like, um, did you not hear about Nick Fallon? And sure enough, she brings up Nick. She says um, he can pair um, notes with Nick Fallon in hell. I'm like, oh, damn. <laughs> yeah, but Lee was like, you know, he's on the dating side. He doesn't need anybody. You know, he's not, he's getting over her. He's going to find a way to get over her. He's like, no, I'm going to get over you. <laughs> and so she decides to back off. But she says that um, if he came after her and her husband again, um, she will pump him full of lead so they won't be able to identify his body. I'm like, damn. 
And then I don't know why that was because she ends up going to the mansion after Stefan and EJ were there. I guess that's why I put it there. But he ended up going on a, oh, I'm still talking about Liam as well. <laughs> he went on a blind, she went on a blind date with, um, did I, what did I do with all that? Oh, I, I moved it all the way down here. Anyways, he didn't, I didn't realize they were really doing the whole dating thing. Um, gonna show it and stuff, but he went on a blind date with Traz. <laughs> he was there for a blind date, so I'm like, oh lordy, who about to show up? And it was Traz. I loved her dress, that was very pretty blue on her. It was almost like seeing, um, a normal, <laughs> trash normal, which is weird. Anyway, but they were mad at the matchmaker, thinking that they would be a match, and um, so I said that she's gonna bring the matchmaker on up on charges because they don't have anything in common. Um, but um, Lee mentioned that they both got the shit, at, the shit in of the stick with Stefan and Gabby. Um, because she was um, I forgot about that. She had, was fake cooking up with Stefan so that Stefan and Gabby could have a moment together. I remember she was laying and um slept in Stefan's bed and um faked the noises. I think she was reading like a magazine <laughs> at the time when she was thinking that time um Stefan would get it on if I'm not mistaken. That's how it went down. <laughs> but um then he was like, Oh, you know, I don't think I wanna be with the woman not good enough for Stefan the mirror <laughs> and she responds, I can still up the charges to conspiracy to commit murder and being an ass in the first degree. I love her. She just <laughs> But you know, she was gonna go away then she saw the bottle of wine that he was drinking and she went in on about this trip to um I forgot what she said it was, but she was doing like wine tasting and she was writing it down in a journal and she'd always take the labels off of the wine. But she had forgot to take it off of one really good one and that was the one that they were drinking. And I was like, oh, Chas being sentimental, this is interesting. Um <laughs> I was like, they're just making up stuff now. <laughs> but um yeah, then she messed it up because um, she started talking about um, Megan and Rolf and Harris, and then he realizes that she was recording, and he gets all mad and leaves, and she just stays there and finishes the bottle, <laughs> which I don't blame her. You can't let go of good wine. Drink it. <laughs> but yeah, but I thought she was going to end up hooking up with somebody else after that. <laughs> but no. So, but I like that they're showing more of her. I always like the character. Um, even though she's very bitchy, it was still good to um <laughs> see her more. Um, but I don't know about her and Lee. It's got a good point there. You know, they have little ties together, but you know, it would be a bad look for her to be with um Lee after you know all the criminal stuff because he never did um go to prison for what happened with Stefan. I forgot. Oh, lordy. How did he get out of that stuff? I forgot. Lordy, my mind just drew a blank. But anyways, speaking of Stefan, him and EJ were bonding and having drinks, talking about Megan and Dimitri. They think that, um... Um, Dimitri's probably, you know, gonna finish Megan's, what Megan started, and that they should get rid of him, because I don't know anything about him. And it was a cute little bonding brother moment, but then it was ruined once they got back to the mansion, because, <laughs> um, Dimitri and Leo ended up having sex again. I'm like, oh, lordy. I was like, it was a new day, uh, um, I was like, I'm trying to figure it out, was this just the same day or is it a new day? And um when confirmed it was a different day, so I'm like, did they stay in bed all night? Or did Leah go in and come back? I don't know. I'm very confused. 
God, my mouth is like hella dry right now. I've been talking for too long. That's my problem. <laughs> but, um, I mean, she ends up sneaking Leo out like that. And he goes in the living room and finds Kristen, and Kristen knows about Dimitri and Leo. <laughs> Rachel told her. <laughs> Rachel thought they were having a sleepover. And Kristen's like, uh, I don't think that's what it was. She's like, she's like, it sounds like you let little lady whistleblower blow your whistle or something. <laughs> if you know what, and catch my drift, I think she said. I was like, oh, lordy. <laughs> I can't. I do enjoy um dirty sex jokes, definitely. That was funny. But um I thought Kristen was gonna tell him that she needs to marry him. <laughs> cause she's like because you know she was against it before, but you know, Megan fucked up, so now Kristen's gonna mess with Dimitri because you know, Megan ran away and left her son there, so Kristen's gonna be all over that. So she wants part of the um family fortune in some way so <laughs> yeah but EJ and Stefan show up and they tell Dimitri he needs to leave and Kristen was you know standing up to them putting her arm around Dimitri talking about he should stay stop being me and uncles basically <laughs> and then eventually Stefan gives in and EJ is pissed so he rushes out and that's how he Runs into Gabby. <laughs> She's like, what's going on? EJ almost ran me over. <laughs> and Stefan and Gabby go upstairs to talk. And it's all funny. So She's like, they need to find a way. He needs to find a way for her to get the money. Yeah. And she did mention that um, her and Gwen were cellmates so they have like this connection or something i'm like oh lordy <laughs> like oh yeah i remember that in fact when everybody got um dumb orpheus and um who else rolf rolf they all got out at the same time <laughs> and they had that epic scene slow motion with the their hair blowing in the wind and stuff i was like that's still like an iconic scene <laughs> even though i only cared about rolf and Kristen getting out Anyways, and they all committed crimes since they got out. <laughs> Only difference is, um, well, Ralph escaped police custody and Gwen never got back, never was rearrested, I don't think. <clears throat> but, anyways, um, yeah, Stefan had told Gwen, um, Gabby why he decided to leave. Let Dimitri stay, and that was to keep your enemies closer. So, be easier for them to monitor what he's doing, what Dimitri is doing if he's there. I'm like, good point. Yeah. Plus, you know, Kristen wants him to stay, so figure out what she's up to, too. So, but um, he asked her where she had been, and she told him that she pulled a gun on Lee and. Of course, he gets mad. <laughs> it's like, um, what happens if Leo took the gun from you? It could have been bad. And she's like, he couldn't have done that. <laughs> Anyways, really, I don't, I don't see Lee actually killing Gabby. <clears throat> yeah, plus Lee's a little... No way that he would have gotten the upper hand on Gabby anyway. But Stefan's just mad. He's like, you know, you keep going out and doing all this stuff and just putting yourself in danger and he doesn't want to lose her and she's like yeah i lost you know going back over that i lost you so you know i'm not gonna lose you again so everybody that tries to make me lose you is gonna get it <laughs> gabby just being gabby basically and um <laughs> it's like you know their wedding's supposed to be next week because i didn't know if it was going to happen because you know they keep putting yourself in danger <laughs> and um she apologizes and he says well if you want to go after our enemies next time take me with you and i'm like oh that'd be so cute they're just going up and attacking people that hurt them <sighs> now I think about it lonnie's been in town and um they never um 
never had a Lonnie and Stefan scene. I mean, granted, she's not gone yet, but um, she's wrapped up in the Abe Whitley stuff. But I would like to see a Stefan and Lonnie scene. Uh, at, at least those two, if not Gabby too. Just this, you know, I think something that we should definitely see. You know, <laughs> this um. Yeah, they even didn't even mention, um, Lonnie hasn't even talked about stuff, and it's like, oh, he's alive, I didn't kill him, you know, still didn't have any of those scenes, but, you know, still, it's still, you know, about Abe right now, so. Anyways. <laughs> oh. And, oh, I'll talk about, um, dumb in a minute. I didn't talk about Leo and Gwen talking. Um, uh, oh, because Gwen had called when Dimitri and Leo were in bed together. And so, but Leo, um, she was wondering where he was. Um, but he meant that he was snooping in his room and things got physical. He said, my lower back is killing me. And then quickly changes the subject. So they tell her that he supports the marriage. And so she's all happy. And she's like, and then she's like, um, oh, he said, I saw another side of him. He's not the Bond villain I thought he was. She's like, he must have worked his magic on you. He's like, you can say that. <laughs> like, oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, I, I don't know where that came from. <laughs> I'm like, oh lordy. <laughs> I was like, how is Gwen going to react to this? Because she was just talking about how good Leo is to her and being on the only one really on her side, like, ever. And he's banging her fiance that. But she's stupid for wanting to marry him in the first place. She doesn't know him. And she's already in love. Ugh, what is with John Hop? What John Hop's from? Days are lives. Always. Everybody's got to fall in love so quickly. It's just, ugh. Yeah, but um, she didn't wonder um, why he handed. I don't know. I think I was using my recorder when I wrote that. But, she, but basically, she's wondering, well... If that fight happened last night, then why was not here this morning, whatever? And why was he hanging out with him this morning? That's what it was. And Leo Latin said that he has a... To me, she's working on a surprise for her for the wedding, so now he has to find something to surprise Gwen with. <laughs> I don't know. But on to this A. Whitley stuff. Lordy, the storyline. <laughs> Oh, Lordy. I would have to do another video just to talk about this hot mess storyline. <laughs> all the plot holes and all this hot mess stuff. Oh, Lordy. But, um... Oh, well, that did happen this week. Um, <laughs> looks like it's gonna come to an end next week with everything that happened this week and then in the previews I saw for next week. But Jerry... We saw in the preview last week that Jerry was going to tell Lonnie everything, and he surely did. <laughs> he told her everything, um, and I'm, like, just thinking. He's, like, telling her everything, and Lonnie's, like, questioning him, and I'm thinking, um, why are you still talking to him? Why don't you ask him where she is so that you can go get Abe? <laughs> it's, like, another week of them talking when, instead of doing action. <laughs> Like, yeah, it still bugged me how um, Kristen and EJ were talking to Leo and Leo not untying them. And then they were talking with Gabby and Gabby was still handcuffed to the bed. Um, it was it Kate? Kate and Sean. That was, was all in the same week or the week after. Anyways, <laughs> and finally, he was, um, she finally asked where he was and she's like, she was talking about leaving town, so... I want to go to her house, and then she goes to her house, and sure enough, there's a, um, she just kept knocking on the door, just knocking on the door, and I'm like, girl, if you don't bust that door down, and sure enough, she busts the door down, thank you, finally, and, and again, 
this sit down talk, not do any actions, and she's sitting there talking to Abe. And <clears throat> of course, they don't know who it is. I swear that they, they talked about that. Um, they talked about Lonnie before, but I guess not because he didn't know that he had a daughter or whatever. But yeah, they're sitting up there talking and said that you know that woman is not Paulina; she's not your wife. If I had a phone, I would show you a picture. And my nose just started itching, <laughs> and they're just sitting there talking. And I'm like, when are you about to come home? She was still at the hospital. Um, <laughs> she talked to Kayla about wanting to leave and stuff. And Kayla was just like, okay. <laughs> but yeah, sure enough, um, Lonnie was about to call the police. And Whitley showed up. And injected her with a sedative. I'm guessing that's what it was. And she keeps giving them to Abe, too, so he won't move around. But <laughs> lordy, the <this> show. <laughs> Yeah, and the next morning she was talking about them all eating breakfast, and I'm like, "Where's Lonnie?" And I was like, "Oh, like panned over to her, tied to a chair." And I'm like, "How's she gonna eat her cereal with her hands tied behind her back?" And Abe looks so out of it, like he is like hella stoned. He shot up some good stuff. I'm like, "Lordy," <laughs> and just me as Whitley got like even like more out there after that. <laughs> At, um, in those scenes with the um breakfast stuff or whatever, or it just me. She just seemed a little more out there because she's really like referring to herself as Pauline and as Whitley. And Lonnie was telling her about it, and Dum Dum told them told her about the ankle monitor, <laughs> which also bugged me about that, but. I'm not getting ahead of myself. <laughs> cause, yeah, cause after she rejected her, Rafe was looking for Lonnie because it was time for her to go back to prison. So he goes to Paulina and um, Lonnie's not there, of course. So Paulina's like, she was in the park, so they go there and she wasn't there. And um, Paulina had a, <clears throat> she was trying to, have an, she was having a heart attack or something. Heart heart attack, panic attack or something. And Rafe took her to the hospital and he um, got the call about um, looking for Lonnie and he lied and saying that he'll have her down, have her back by sundown. But <laughs> it was funny, the um, federal marshal showed up <laughs> at the police station. And he's like, you're talking about phone calls. So I thought I'd just come down here because... Um, Prisoners, not there. <laughs> and Rafe was thinking, you know, didn't think that Lonnie would just like run away. Um, thought that something was wrong, something happened to her. I'm like, good detective work. I was like, maybe this will help him get his job back, maybe. <laughs> Cause Abe would be mayor again and be thankful that um Rafe helped everybody or whatever. And then maybe they'll drop the um the um rule that you can't date your subordinate, but <clears throat> but he admitted that he doesn't know what Lonnie is, and the marshal thinks that Rafe and Jada are both harboring a fugitive, and that they're both in trouble. <laughs> but Rafe's like, you know, remember Lonnie's a model prisoner, and she has kids back at home that sh you know she would want to get back to. <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh yeah, and she's up for parole in six months, so why not just wait it out? Mm. Marshall's like, yeah, okay. And then he's like, oh, well, I can check Lonnie on her um, ankle monitor. I'm like, really? Really? You just now thinking that? <laughs> That's so stupid. First of all, why didn't Rafe and Jada think of that one? And then two, the fellow Marshall shows up looking for her. But you can check your her ankle monitor, so why would you even bug Rafe? Why don't you just um trace the monitor? Then you would have been able to get to Whitley's house before she dumped her down at the docks. <laughs> That's what's the the story. Oh, it was so stupid for Lonnie to mention the ankle monitor too. It was like. Like why would you do that? Why don't you just sit there and shut up and let people come and save you? 
And also, how did Whitley not see that ankle monitor? What did she think that that was? Lonnie's pants weren't that long. She could have easily saw that ankle monitor. Don't they make noise? I don't know. The girl, I well, I don't know. The girl that had it on when I was at the nail salon, I don't remember making noise, but, you know, then again, there was music playing and people were talking, so I could I wasn't that close to her. But, <clears throat> anyways... This the storyline, but you know, the um, dude's like, Oh, I got a hit on the ankle monitor just as Steve was trying to call Jada. Yeah, Steve and John, um, Steve was trying to go to Jerry's place, but Jerry had snuck out the window because he showed up like right after Lonnie left because he was talking to Whitley and she put all the blame on Jerry. And then she's like, oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to do this. Hopefully you're out of town already. <sighs> Lordy jeebus. <laughs> but yeah, but there was, I know Steve and John get into the apartment and they're thinking like, how did he get out of here? And I'm like, I know y'all saw that window over there open. I'm like, oh Lord, what are they doing with Steve and John? They're supposed to be the smart ones on the show. <laughs> but yeah. They flew to LA, which is the fun. <laughs> Hilarious. Because Jerry took, um, I guess he took a bus or a train there. And so Steve, <laughs> Steve and John um, got there before him. <laughs> like waiting there for him. Oh, Lordy. <laughs> I thought that was funny. He left way before them, but they just took like a few hour flight and got to LA. Yeah, they could have went there, saw the Hollywood sign and everything, and still gotten to the station before he got there. But anyway, he told them that he told Lonnie everything, and he was confused why, you know, why would they be here looking for him when he told Lonnie everything? And they're like, oh, crap. <laughs> I was like, if Lonnie knows everything, then that means something's up with Lonnie, because why wouldn't Lonnie tell anybody that, you know, she knows where Polly at. She knows where Abe is. So, yeah. So Steve was gonna call Rafe, but John's like, "Oh, he doesn't work for. Um, he's not the commissioner no more." Steve's like, "Oh yeah." So call Jada, and Jada sees that Steve's calling, but you know they rush out to go find Lonnie. I'm like, oh lordy. Yeah, and I think, oh, they're gonna get to Whitley's, but no. Sure enough, what do they do? They get to the dock and see Lonnie passed out. <laughs> oh, Lordy. <sighs> the show. Yeah, and Steve was like, oh, I called somebody else. And I'm like, you know, I thought he was calling Paulina. But, you know, because they cut to a scene with Paulina and she's talking to Kate. But, you know, her phone doesn't ring. So I'm like, I was just waiting for her phone to ring. Like, ring? Or is her phone on silent, too? Like, ugh. So useless. Y'all got your phones on silent, or you don't answer. Ugh. But, yeah, Kate went over. What? I forgot. Why did Kate go over there? I don't remember. <laughs> but they were sitting there talking, and um, Pauline was like, oh, I shouldn't have faith that um, she should know she had faith for them finding Lonnie because they couldn't find Philip. And Kate confessed that Philip wasn't lost. It's not lost. Um, she's telling the whole story about everything about Philip. And I thought he was supposed to be on this week because I read the article about John Paul coming back to play Philip. And I swore they said it was starting this week, but I guess not. And looks like maybe not next week. Maybe they say next month. And I just read it wrong. <laughs> well, anyway, it's going to be very, very soon. So. But I'm still dis. I'm happy Philip is coming back. But yeah, I'm still disappointed that's not Jay because Jay is my Philip. But I'll give John Paul another go. Um, when he was Philip, I I wasn't watching Days or Lives that much, but I was in and out of watching at the time. I was mostly on a break from the show during that time, so I didn't really get to see much of him. But I heard that um, Philip and Chloe pretended to be a couple during their time, and I'm like, oh. That would have been fun to see, but but no. One of the only scenes I can remember is Philip asking Chloe for another chance, and she turned him down. No, 
I don't know, but um, Philip will be there to pick up the pieces from Chloe for when Xander finds out about Sarah. But anyways, I jumped ahead of myself. I was just <laughs> more about Xander and Sarah and Chloe in a minute. But um, we finally get to what's going on with Whitley to explain what's going on. Um, Marlena and Kayla were talking about everything about her and find out that Marlena treated Whitley back in 2021 when she was possessed by the devil. I'm like, oh my god. No wonder Whitley is like Whitley is now. No, no need to go further into what's going on. But sure enough, um, Whitley lost her husband and three cats to a um, carbon monoxide poisoning from a faulty space heater. I guess their, um, well, I would say their electricity was out, but then I was like, well, then how did they use the <laughs> um, heater? But so they were just, I guess the heat wasn't working, so they put on the space new space heater and um Whitley was at work and she comes home to them dead. I'm like oh. mm. that's hella rough, Lordy. Mm mm mm. That explains why all the stuffed cats. Yeah, so Yeah, because when she said something about her being allergic, but you know that's just crazy. <laughs> She was saying that she remembers that Willie was blaming herself for everything. That, you know, she wasn't there to say goodbye to them and stuff. I'm like, oh, damn. Now you're trying to make us feel bad for her after everything she's been doing. It's like, oh, Lordy, stop with that. They be doing shit like that. <laughs> but, um, <clears throat> that's all I had to tell you about that. Um, what's going on there. I'm like, and still, I'm still thinking, because I think pretty much, why is this all coming out now? <laughs> I don't know, but the storyline will be over soon. Hopefully next week is the end of it, or the grand finale of it. When I, um, in the promo, it does show that Whitley has been arrested. So. I, like, I think it was, yeah, Pauline is when Pauline slaps her, so. Ooh, that's gonna <laughs> be hot, hot, messy. In the police station, too. I like that. So, we shall, I'm sure nobody will arrest her, but we shall see how that goes down. But, um, Rafe and Johnny ended up, um, catching up, which was kind of random to have them in scenes together, but, um, uh, <laughs> I mean, you know, they've been close in the past, so, but I guess it's a good way to catch up on it stuff <laughs> so but Johnny told him that Nicole was pregnant <laughs> race faced <laughs> and then he said that um now that my dad knows he's the father or it's like knew what <laughs> and Johnny said that you know they thought that may be his uncle Eric's but um he didn't go in details about the it was because of the bis the poison biscuits um he left that part out, so. Uh, but he also talked about losing wit, um, Wendy to trip. Yeah. <laughs> and he says that he got fired. Oh, I'm sorry, Rocky. <laughs> um, he got fired for sleeping with Jada. Like, mm, so, yeah, both having time. <laughs> but they decided to go to the pub where um, Jada and Tal um, Talia are talking Tyler is mad that some people decided to have a water balloon fight in the square, so she had to clean it all up. But that she was grateful that she didn't, and, you know, she's not in prison right now, so just cleaning up some broken balloons way better than in prison. Yeah, but then I started talking about Rafe getting fired, and apparently Rafe's a good lover, because she told Tyler that Rafe, having sex with Rafe was amazing or awesome. And tell his face. I'm like, oh lord, who's behind? <laughs> sure enough, there was Rafe and Johnny. <laughs> and Johnny turns to Rafe and is like, my man. He's like, my man. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, I thought that was funny. <laughs> um, but um, 
Rafe and Jada were talking about, um, they started talking and I stopped listening to them. But, um, John and, um, talking with Talia and found out they had connections. You know, Rafe used to be Johnny's stepdad. And then they started talking about Chanel. <laughs> He's like, yeah, you, um, pretended to like my ex-wife Chanel. And they're like, <laughs> he tells her that if she does anything to hurt Chanel again, she'll have to deal with him. And Ty was looking worried. I'm like, I would too. I mean, we really haven't seen Johnny like do anything really bad, except for when he was possessed. But still, he's a Demira and he's Sammy's son. <laughs> Sammy Freddy's son. I can only imagine the messed up stuff that's in his brain that he could possibly do. But. Uh, but I guess this is kind of like the start of a triangle between them. I already, <laughs> I already talked about Lee's blind date. <laughs> but, oh lordy, that's at the bottom? Oh lordy. Uh, little side note stuff. Um, while we're talking about Tripp and Wendy, uh, she had a facial on and he came home to see her and she put a bowl in front of her face and they started kissing. They're like gonna take it to the bedroom, but Lee came home sad about his um date with um his mystery date. I don't think she he said that it was trash, but so now Tripp and Wendy um having sex. So what would their couple name be? Trendy Rip Rippy? I don't know. Anyways, but Bonnie's not really good at keeping a secret. <laughs> I was like, the only way to keep a secret would be not to talk about it. But it's just so far for so they gotta talk about it. Yeah, her and Justin um came home and are talking about um Maggie couldn't know and she overhears and Bonnie makes up that Sarah and Rex were back together and Sarah didn't want her to know. So Maggie said, um and she couldn't understand why it's like, um, you forget that you like in love with um Xander. <laughs> You're his Zarear, is that how you pronounce it? Their couple name, Zarear fan. <laughs> and so, um, Maggie said she would talk to Sarah, but Bonnie called Sarah first to give her a heads up. So, um, but, um, <laughs> Justin's trying to help her keep a secret, and he's like way more calm and stuff about it. Oh, Lordy. <laughs> um, Xander and Chloe, um, he bought her a dart board for her three month anniversary of her throwing the dart almost in her heart. So I'm like, oh yeah, I remember that scene. <laughs> yeah, so they played darts and then they said have sex before the pizza got there. And you know what? I don't remember seeing the pizza. But the dart board fell off of the wall and I'm I'll be ready when those the the ready when they break up. Yeah, and EJ and Nicole talk about whether or not they want to know the sex of the babies. I guess they'd agree to do that. And next week, they're supposed to do some tests, um, DNA swab from EJ. So um, I guess this is when we find out for sure whether or not he's the daddy. Um, but um, Salone is pregnant. <laughs> she came home saying, uh, wish that Eric is in the dark, but. She's talking to Colin, and she made up that um, he doesn't know that she's late. <laughs> and so he rushes to go get a um, pregnancy test, and she takes it, and she's pregnant. Oh, Lordy. So this is the screen's baby switch, even though Salone's, like, two months behind Nicole now. Yeah, because... I don't know. I don't feel like doing math, and I really don't care anymore about the storyline. But, you know, I know. I'm an EJ and a coffee. <laughs> and I'll probably gain interest more next week when it looks like Eric is going to find out what Sloan did. So that's what makes me think they're going to find out for sure um, who the daddy is. But who knows? And lastly, Sarah. I'm Sarah. <laughs> Stephanie and Chad already moved into their place. So they're just like just already there. Okay. Yeah, they're gonna have dinner in any place and Alex shows up, um, half naked. 
<laughs> and I get, and Chad's like, is this is gonna be like having you as a neighbor? Well, it turns out Alex's hot water was out, so, and Plummer couldn't come to the next day, so he asked if he could take a shower in their place, and Stephanie was okay for it, and he took a much longer shower, and he comes out in Chad's robe and wants to eat their food. <laughs> it was like, Chad and Stephanie, we're going to wait till he leaves to eat. I'm like, why? Your food's right there. Eat it. But, oh, Lord, it's just another way to try and um, make this triangle interesting. But I find nothing about this triangle interesting. You know, three characters are boring as heck. I know. It's one of those storylines where be careful what you wish for happens. <laughs> Because, yeah, I was one of those people that wanted Stephanie to come back, and then she comes back to this hot, shitty mess. And nothing to do with her family, barely anything to do with her family when Kayla supposedly died. And yeah, and here she is dating her cousins. Um, would you call him a widow? Uh, uh. The cousin's widow, a husband that she left when she died. So waiting for Abby to come back. I don't believe she's dead. <laughs> that and she's also flirting with her cousin. So not by marriage, but you know, Justin and Adrian have been together long enough to where their family just not blood related and apparently drifted off. But anyway, I digress. That's another, that's, that's a whole nother video. I know I always say that's another video. That's another video, no topic, not really, I'm not, not going to talk no more about that. Anyways, that's all I'll say about this week. <laughs> Let me know in the comments below what did you enjoy and didn't enjoy this week. And if you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe, because why not? And, um... Share this video, even if it's to make fun of the fact that I think most of the characters on this show are being really stupid. I'm sure you guys can agree on some of them, definitely. But anyways, um, it looks like the sun is going down. It's just four, so we still have sunlight for another four hours. But the sun's been going up and down today. Um, hopefully it's not going to rain. Sunny, you take Rocky on a walk. It's been a few hours. Well, he's not done on the floor. But um, enjoy the rest of your weekend. And I hope you guys enjoy your rest of your weekend. <laughs> and I will see you guys here next week. Maybe, hopefully, please. Why not? Why not? It's going to be a hot mess next week. Got to um, hear my final thoughts on all these stories. <laughs> Anyways, I love you guys. 